But boy, that's a window into the heart of God, isn't it? Well, I used to teach about this a lot in the early days of Willow. And those of you who are veteran Creekers, you know this passage. And as I'm retelling it right now, you're remembering that this became just a part of our value system as a church. And lots of us started throwing informally. We never had a program for it. We just, I taught about it enough that people started holding Matthew parties. They would get people from the office and people from Willow Creek, and they'd put them together. And, and they'd do a backyard barbecue, or they'd do something down the basement, shoot pool and have a contest and have food and these kinds of things. But we started hearing a lot about Matthew parties. And in the 80s and 90s, uh, a lot of people came to faith in Christ due to these Matthew parties. And again, then when I started teaching more on weekends and um, new community had a variety of teachers, and so that it just wasn't appropriate more, so much for me on the weekends to keep reinforcing this. But I'm just one of those fools who never stopped throwing Matthew parties because I believe in them. And I don't do it to impress anybody, and I don't do it so I can tell stories about it. I do it because it's the work of the Holy Spirit in my life trying to open me up more to be the kind of person that reflects the heart of the Father. And so, this last Christmas Eve, I did again what I've done, you know, for I don't know how many years now. I uh, invited about 20 people who have never been to Willow Creek, never been to my house, and who would self-profess to be quite far from God. Understand? All right. Then I invited about 20 additional people who I've been working on for a long time, and they're kind of in the uh, seeker slow lane, if you know what I mean. They're in the remedial class. They're coming to faith kicking and screaming. Maybe they'll get there someday. They come to Willow sporadically if I badger them enough, and uh, they've been to my house and some of my parties before, but I'm working on them, and, and it's going slow, but you know they agreed to come. So I had 20 or so people very far from God, totally uh, uninitiated in any way, and then about another 20 of these people in, in progress. And then I sprinkled in about another 12 to 15 very strong and relationally intelligent Christ followers from this church. I screened that group very, very carefully. No overzealous types, no bounty hunters, no truth vigilantes. Just normal, relationally intelligent, mature, open-hearted, radically inclusive kinds of people because I was going to put them in a room with my friends who, apart from a miracle from God, are going to spend an eternity apart from God. I knew what the stakes were. And I knew who I wanted in that room. And I wish you could have all seen. I wish I, you know, would, have, would not have been appropriate. I wish I could have videotaped it. Because... In my home in Barrington in the 21st century, there became a mirror image of what happened in Matthew's home in the first century. It was powerful. And it was fun. It was a ball. The first time I looked down at my watch, it was past midnight, and a lot of people stayed till quarter to two. And then I just threw them out. I said, I got a bunch more services to do, and I can't, because it was like on the 23rd, and I still had services to do on the 24th. And so... But if, if you were wondering what made it, what gave it that buzz, what, what made it so magical, what gave it spiritual edge, um, you know what it really was? The Willow people that I invited did exactly what the Christian faith wants its adherents to do. I wish you could have seen it again. The Willow people came, and of course, they didn't know a lot of the friends that I had invited. So when they first came into the door of my home, they stood in little creaker circles. You know, they had to start somewhere. And so they were making creaker conversations and, you know, talking about the Christmas Eve set and these kinds of things. But uh, then I just watched them, and I was so proud of them because one by one they would look around the room, and then I could tell they would say, you know what, I'm not going to stay all night in this circle. I'm going to walk over there 
And I'm going to stick my hand out and I'm going to introduce myself to somebody. And I watched these people say, excuse me, and then turn. And I knew what was going through their mind because I've made that walk a lot of times in my life across a room. And I knew every step across the the great room in my home. They're walking, they're going, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know if this guy's going to want to talk. I don't know if this woman has any you know, desire to have a conversation with me. But you know what? I'm going to give that a shot. I'm going to take that walk across the room, pray every step of the way, enter the zone of the unknown, and just see what God does in that unknown zone. And those conversations started to light up and I was just amazed because I would think, I thought to myself before the party, oh, if so-and-so from Willow could ever make a connect with so-and-so, who's a business person in the community here, but would never get near Willow. And all that. If those two would ever connect, they would be able to, it would be so kinetic if that would happen. And I was walking around making sure people had food and drink and all that kind of stuff. And I'd see, sure enough, here's so-and-so talking. Oh, perfect. Thank you, God. And I was thanking God that no Pharisees showed up and told it, you know, that it was like a bad party or something like that. But I saw all that happen, and I'm not kidding you. Uh, that was about as good a time as I've had in a long, long time. And some of the conversations I had were just supernatural. We had all come to the Christmas Eve service together, so we had that to talk about. Some of them actually, people had never been to our church before. When we chatted about how they experienced the service, a couple of people I talked to pulled the business cards, those cards that we passed out on Christmas Eve, and uh, one of them said, yeah, I'm a person who just needs to know more facts. That's the one, and I just found it fascinating. About half of them had purchased, half of these people had purchased a purpose-driven life and we're going to read it, and wanted to know more about that. And, and so, and no kidding, I was like in this levitational thing for a long, long time. And, and uh, I tried to, after I kicked everybody out, um, there wasn't much time for sleeping after we cleaned up the house. But sometime really late that night, I just said to myself again, you know, it all, the whole thing, the whole thing comes down. The, the, the whole future of the kingdom of God comes down to whether or not rank and file Christ followers will do in their everyday lives what people did in my house tonight. It's the ball game. And when it happens, you know, when people leave circles of comfort and they make that walk and they explore the unknown, uh, Everybody wins. The Christ follower wins because there's an internal spiritual victory that happens when you walk by faith and not by sight. There's something a lot like Jesus that is going on in you when you leave a circle of comfort and take that faith, walk across a room and, and reach out that hand. Um, well, this is something you can all do.